Man, 2023 has been a different type of year for me. Um, I don't even think me and you might have talked about that in candid uh, conversation, but um, in, in 2023, I lost, I had two twin girls that, that I lost, you know, that God took them home before, before that time. Uh, hey man, it's okay. It's okay. Suave Corleone, how you doing, brother? Hey, man, I'm doing outstanding, my guy. How are you? I'm very good. Uh, thank you for um, you actually uh, making history as being our first uh, international guest. How does it feel? Hey, international guest? Breaking yeah, history, making making history. Sounds yeah. great to me, man. Yeah, Sounds that's good. Especially good. when you're talking to a friend. That's always going to make it better. Exactly, exactly. So for those that don't know, where are you hailing from? I'm hailing from Atlanta, Georgia. Right. In the ATL. US. ATL, yeah? <laughs> yeah, ATL. You see the hat? We're making a fish for you today. Yeah, I hear Got that. Got the Falcons hat that. on and everything. Yeah. All oh, right, right. Yeah, it's good, to, it's, good to, uh, it's good to hear from you, man. It's been a while, and we're getting to, obviously, yeah. you coming to the UK. Uh, but before we do that, uh, first of all, let's actually start with your name. Like, your name is Swab Corleone. How, how did you come up with that yeah, artist's man. name? Yeah, absolutely. So to be honest with you, I had this name since I was in the sixth grade. I have been rapping like my entire life. Uh, my older brother really got me into rapping and that's the name he gave me. And uh, I got the suave part because I was always known to how I could speak to young ladies. Um, my brother's okay. a lot older than me and I always <laughs> try to mack they, their girlfriends. And, you know, if they have they had sisters that was my age, it was always, you know, a guarantee. I just was that was my thing. I could just speak real smooth. And then Kelly Jones, because I, I really took hip hop very serious, it was a point in, hi in hip hop where like, if you were really good, they associated your name with like a mafia type name type of thing. Um, and so that's what Kelly came came to be, like a first and last name. Um, and what's really unique about it is people that knew me for a very long time. I mean, through middle school, high school, college for rapping and being really good at what I do on the secular side. And when my life changed, I honestly thought God was going to change my name. And I had created these rap names that I thought would be acceptable in the Christian arena. Okay. And God told me, like, man, you talking right now. No, you know, you ain't going to change that name. That name you have right there is going to be going to bring people to Christ. And so it's been it's been doing that, man. If I do a show in my city or around where people have known that name for something else, you know, people are coming to God, man. They're coming in and really experiencing him in his fullness because they expected something else to be there. So it's been a blessing. But, yeah, I had that name a real long time, Doc, long time. So, so Corleone has nothing to do with the fact that you like the Godfather, the Godfather trilogy. Nothing to do with that. It's I love it. I love those movies it. too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love those movies too. That might have been why they had picked that particular uh, mafia name for me. And mm -hmm. the thing about it is, I was so young, I spelled the name wrong. You know what I mean? I spelled that last okay. name wrong and pronounced it wrong. But it just it stuck to me. That's who I was. That that's why you know became to be was that name spelled that way. Um, yeah, man. But I do love the Godfather movies for sure. Michael Carleone, yeah, yeah, that's my guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear that. I hear that. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. That's good. What, what is what is a phrase that they, what is that? I'll give him a no for he can't refuse, right? <laughs> that's a, that's <laughs> yeah, a yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Anyway, let's move on. This is not a movie podcast. So the first time I met you, you were actually uh, coming to the UK. Uh, so yes. I think I believe it was two years ago. Uh, please tell us what you felt was the vision behind you know why you decided to come to the other side of the pond as it were yeah hey man specifically um is nothing i can say in terms of my own uh regard or one of my own marketing or, or even artistry ambition it had nothing to do with none of those things it was literally from god um god gave me a revelation that i would go to london uk specifically and that uh you know i would impact that region and i would come in the way that just it's the way i do things um, he gave me the people to bring with me and, and he literally gave me the people to partner with me when I got there. Um, so like such as DJ Sean's my sister, we didn't know each other at all before this at all. Um, I, I ended up getting her uh, information through uh, DJ Mark actually because um, he was already spending some of my music. It wasn't enough to say, hey, they would invite me, um, but it was enough for God to make the invite. And so I met DJ Sean's through him. And then from there, she got me involved in the DJ uh, in, inside the... Um, uh, the, the, the uh, I'm so sorry, the CHH Collective, um, which is, I think, is still one of the most outstanding situations ever um, to have, 
you know, some of the best, both independent and known artists in one arena, um, all serving God, also uh, collaborating and speaking on their thoughts in one place. And from there with Manny, I, I met, you know, JL, I met, you know, CJ, I met, you know what I mean? Uh, several other people and, and it allowed me to build something very beautiful and, and long lasting. But God gave the invite, man. It was truly one of those situations where it was a divine invitation. It didn't come by man, it came by God. And every step that he ordered is, is crazy to see it. From the radio connections, from the uh, the publishing company connections, from the A&R uh, connections, from the, for everything. He, he orchestrated to be able to, to put a carpet, so to speak, um, about this American guy coming here and his, and his mindset. And I got a chance to speak on a lot of different uh, radio stations, podcasts, and things like that, even in some publications where I was able to speak on my mindset. And the mindset was truly just being obedient to God. It was truly uh, a situation where I made my moves in faith. Like that was the steering, that was the fuel uh, for that for that flight and for that um, for that 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 kicking off of a tour, for that kicking off of uh, on my third album. It was all God. So that that would be it's a long answer, but it's not a way to give it to you short. You know what I mean? Like it's one of those things. It's the only way I kind of could present it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We found God. You know, it's a beautiful thing when you're walking in obedience Man, to yes. the Lord. Did you feel? that you fulfilled the God, the plan that God had for you coming to the U.S. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hands down, I do. Mm -hmm. Hands down, I do. Um, it was one of them situations where uh, ultimately it wasn't about a million people being in a place at the same time. It was about the people that was ordained to be that was there at the same time. Mm -hmm. And man, we had us an outstanding time. We had us uh, a kickoff like no other. People was on a A1 platform. Guys was, was showcasing their talents at the highest level and God was getting the glory. I mean, like it was an amazing concert. It was an amazing move of God. And not only was it a situation where, you know, we had a great time with music. We had worship, man. We had, we had demons coming up out of people. We had people confessing God. You know what I'm saying? We had people come in to see him in a way they never seen him before in their life. And it was young folks. It was people in the midst or whatever they was dealing with. They was... You know, it, it, it was a beautiful situation. Like something like that is 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 mind blowing, and not to speak, and not no only that, um, but it allowed me to create connections not only in the UK but also in the states at an elevated level. Because when you walk in obedience at that type of level, it's almost like God gave me access to an additional door. You know, after I left there, man, I, I got a, a Grammy consideration, my first one for sitcom love. Like I, I got a whole Grammy consideration based off obedience. Because you had to look into me differently. You had to weigh this artist differently. He's not just a regular person chasing anything. Because I made that type of step in obedience, it created something else. You know, me and Shuns have done, you know, a, a big, huge record that, that end up getting a, a Grammy consideration this year, which is extraordinary. Um, it allowed me to meet my brother KD, you know, from South Africa through this meeting. And, uh, you know, it just, it just, it allowed me my zeal and my drive and my confidence that God to be stretched way beyond anything that would have happened if I would have moved on man's chronological order. So that obedience unlocked something different um, that truly I could never have done it myself, man. So yeah, absolutely. I feel it was it was 100% worth it. Um, and I'm looking forward to going back, man. It kind of makes me think of, um, you know, scriptures like Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20, which says, uh, and I'm sure you might know it, that God can do exceedingly and abundantly uh, far more than yes. you can ask or imagine. You, I, I guess you'd say that would be your experience, right? Absolutely, that was my experience. I think you mm -hmm. you verbalized it extremely well. Yeah, that yeah. definitely was the situation. Hey, you're the one. You're the lyricist. You're the rapper here, not me. You're the one with the words. Oh uh, no, no, no! You a man of God. You hear what yeah, you hear. Trying, and that was that was perfectly that was the perfect scripture to, to articulate what happened. And man, yeah. that's that's a hundred percent what happened, man. He yeah. he could do so much more. And, you know yeah. what I'm saying? That you can never do on your own. Not even close. Like we're not even the same ballpark. Yeah, amen. So you also brought some of your friends to the UK. How how yeah. are you, so how how important is it for you to go to not go it alone and to be your friends in your all that in all that God has planned for you to do? Well, one thing about it, God ordained who was supposed to go. Um that's that's important. See the thing that happened, um, it was a revelation in God in very specifics. Like he literally gave me what to do and I jotted them down. You know what I mean? Like I wrote down what he told me to do um, in every aspect of preparation for this event that I've never had done before. Um, and what I end up finding out later on is that the information that he gave me was in such an advanced level of excellence that I end up giving advice to people who've been doing it 10, 15 years later. Wow. 
Wow. You know, like they've been doing it a lot longer than me. But when I, I got back and I got in these rooms, the insight God gave me was so profound that helped open additional doors to be able to speak in confidence on just what he gave me. I didn't I didn't add a, I take away nothing from what he gave me. So what, what I'm saying is my brother been forgiven, incredible, incredible artist who's also my family. He's also my cousin through marriage. Okay, um, okay. But he's an incredible artist. Mm -hmm. And he was there with me. You have 6'5". Um, another ordained situation. We had just met in October prior to that year doing my first dub award uh, event in, in Tennessee. Um, and I had never been there before. And and, and God created that door. And, and again, just another thing that was ordained. It was several other people who said they wanted to go, who planned to go. But they didn't, they wasn't able to go, man. They wasn't able to make those trips and it's fine. It wasn't something that was literally ordained to do. Um, so when it comes to those people being there, it's an experience we'll never have again. My brother Alex um, was able to showcase his talent. Uh, he's a profound guy. Uh, he just just a friend. And it was crazy me if him been friends since Lulu was in kindergarten. So that's a friend of mine. I've been friends almost my whole life. Before I even knew he could sing. I had no idea uh, we've been friends. And... Um, he was able to bring oh, his bring so his wife just, and so his kids able to enjoy that experience. So it was it was it was next level. So, yeah, so yeah, that was Alex, the guy that oh, was singing. Yeah, yeah, oh, absolutely. Wow. That's my brother. Yeah, he came with me as well. Oh, that's that's amazing. You know, as I was thinking yeah. about, you know, the decision to not only come alone but come with your friends, it kind of made me think of some things that I came across through social media. So so check this out. Um, there has been a conversation that men in this day and age in the 21st century don't have the ability to form genuine friendships could you share a okay. perspective on that as a man of god i think what it comes to is the sermon is a major part of how you move in his life um god gives you through the holy spirit a way to know who's in the room to know what conversations you're entertaining and the reality of things some situations are literally for a season and that's all some things are literally for a reason. That acquaintance, that conversation, that friendship is only for a reason. And then you have some that's for a lifetime. And identifying what these things are are key. Because each one of those things have a place. Each one of those things have a moment in time where it's a necessity. But letting God be the direction in those conversations, it makes a lot of difference. Uh, I have a group of friends of mine. Uh, we talk every day. We've been friends since seventh grade, all of us. It's about six guys. We talk every day about life, about everything. So you're talking about people that have been friends through life situations, through, through marriage, through divorce in some cases. Um, you know what I mean? Through different ups and downs in life. And we stay friends. And it's been a big deal for me because I've been able to have conversations with these guys because of the, of the background we've built that allowed me to be able to be the man I need to be in another room for my wife or the room I need to be in other situations because I can have a candid conversation with people who understand me for who I am. You know, who could speak life into what I am and who could also understand enough of who I was to tell me exactly who I am today and who could see that difference. Like that thing is, it, it, it resonates. When you know you're different, but you don't realize how different you are and how different you're impacting God, it is to other people, especially people you know from the past. So I, I think it's one of those things, uh, regardless of time, um, it's a necessity to have friendships, it's a, it's a necessity to have uh, partnerships and camaraderies is important. Is necessary because the life is too hard doing it alone. And even with the greatest of wives, it's good and important to still have friends that you can have a conversation because some things you can't bring to the house and just wisdom. Some things you can't you can't get out in the midst of your frustration with that person because the repercussions of this could be too much. You see what I'm saying? Um, so that, that would be my take on that. I think it's necessary. I think it definitely still happens. I think just the sermon is necessary because there's a lot of people have motives, but people had additional motives in the 1800s. People have additional you know, other motives in the 1700s, 1500s, in any part of the world. So that mindset's always been the case. It didn't change because of the current time or the current climate of life. Yeah, that's beautiful. And <clears throat> let's let's go a little bit deeper. I don't want to just talk about friendships in the context of, you know, advancing in the plans that God has for you. I just want to talk about just friendships in general. Uh, there, there has been a conversation that men are scared to be real and to be vulnerable could you maybe weigh in on that just on a personal level yeah on, on new in new people situations yes i'm gonna tell you the truth being transparent in new situations if people i don't know you only vulnerable to an extent that's being honest 
and and maybe because of that, certain acquaintances they don't they don't extend and become more. Uh, maybe some things, a lot of the friendships you make er, later in life are a lot more surface level than they are things that you meet at, at earlier parts in your life. And I think part of it is it is that um, as men we have walls up, man. I mean, it's just a natural thing. We have these. Um, we just prepare for for offenses, you know, that may come from other situations about how we respond. And so we we always kind of come up with a wall in our presentation. Say, so I, I think that's honest. I think that's a real thing. Um, I can say in realistic, you know, it just being a man, I haven't made a million friends as a man. I've made several acquaintances. I've made several people as conversations that we have, but to say friends, no, I think, you know, it, it doesn't, I, it's not as easy. I put it that way. So I, I, I kind of agree with that part. Yeah. Okay. And what, or what do you feel, what do you feel is required or what do you feel like the church can do or what, 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 how does a Christian faith informs men on how to do community together i think the church it being in a, a brick and mortar church scenario um where you have um a, a powerful ministry in terms of that it allows the comfort levels to be created because you you in your most vulnerable state in worship i feel like that's that's not what you are at work that's not what you are when you're watching the game with your friends at a bar that's that's not who you are in the places you in a place where you're at your most vulnerable state and the only you know like you you fully giving yourself to god in that room so if you can Meet people there that can see you for you and there. Um, that's the best friendships, I guess, sometimes you can have because it's already one of those things that both people was already in a vulnerable space when you meet. Um, so I, I created some friendships, I guess I could say. I guess I could backtrack a little bit on that. I mean, when it comes to my church, I just consider them family, though. Um, it, it's, it's weird to even say friends, but we are like family because when it comes to our worship, when it comes to our life scenarios, we went through a lot of things together because no one understood it like we could. So in a church situation, I feel is the most vulnerable spot um, in order to do that, because if you're there and you're being 100 percent yourself, which is authenticity is the big is the biggest part in any friendship. Um, so that I guess that's what I would I, I would respond in that fashion. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So let us <coughs> let us pivot uh, to music now. How did you all start music for you? Uh, tell us about your journey to, you know, where you to, to from where you started and to where to where you are now today. Yeah, absolutely, man. Um, like I was telling you earlier, I, when I was kind of describing my name, I've been in hip hop my whole life. Like literally my older brother is 12 years older than me. And uh, just following that to him and loving the things that he loved, hip hop is one of those things that got a hold of me so young and it never let me go. The whole culture, mm -hmm. but specifically rap, specifically freestyling. So I had done it very young and I kept going. Um, I ended up starting writing lyrics about when I was about 12 years old. Uh, I started recording when I was about 16. I was a part of a group um, that was entertaining at large labels. Um, we was in the same studio as Outkast and things of that nature when I was oh, 17. Wow, okay, okay. You know, so I was I was making moves really aggressive in, the, in, the, in that fashion in terms of being secular music. And I took lyrics very serious. So I was easily probably the, one of the best, not only in my high school, but in my city. Because I really took rap very serious. Um, but I also had a fear to be transparent. Um, about releasing my music to the masses and being at the mercy of people's responses. So, like, I went to college and I, I released my, I recorded my first solo album as a freshman. And uh, the people that heard it is one of those critically acclaimed scenarios. But it was if you heard it again that that uh, that restriction in that regard of of fear of rejection or fear of people's responses to me really being um, authentically myself at the time in terms of my subject matter. And of course, it wasn't the subject matter I have now, um, but it just was me being myself. And um, yeah, that's how it starts. So I do. I've been doing secular music at that point all this time. Um, I, met, I meet my wife, uh, fall in love, uh, and honestly, through us, I, I really created a relationship with God. It's been bigger than any point in my whole life. Now, it wasn't that I had never gone to church? I've been going to church my whole life, but I was one of those guys that straddled the fence to be transparent. And where I was, that was acceptable. So you didn't have to challenge yourself across the board in that regard. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and meeting my wife and being in the church that I was in was the first time that it was bigger than that. It was more than just uh, religion. It was about relationship. And, and and my desire for God shifted me um, to a lot of things dropped off that I did before. And one of those things that stopped was hip hop and rap. Completely, I stopped. And I just assumed that's something I wouldn't be able to do Um because, you know, I, I didn't believe, I, I wasn't a fan of Christian hip-hop music at the time at all, to be transparent. 
And I figured that that wasn't going to be something for me because my style of music and stuff was so different. And um, I remember like yesterday, I've told this story several times. I was at an event, um, actually at my current church, church I love so much, Harvest Tabernacle in Lithonia. Shout out my apostle Travis Jennings and Pastor Steph. Um, we was at an event um, called Harvest Got Talent. And when I was there, I did the only song I ever did at that point that had no cursing. That, that that particular song, and it was very, very well perceived, but more than that, how it was received by people is how God responded to me in that regard. I'll never forget it. My apostle was speaking, but I didn't hear him. I only heard God, and God told me this. He said, not only would you you rap, you will continue to do that, but you'll do it for me, um, and you'll do it. You know what I mean? And that changed my life, man. And from there, I released Good News, uh, which has done crazy numbers across the world. Um, I released my first project, A Peculiar People. Um, mm -hmm. We did very well in the States. Um, but it was independent. I never did anything like that before. So my idea of success, I just wanted to please God. And just doing that independently, that album did roughly about 30,000 streams. And at the time, that was gigantic to me because I never released anything publicly. I was always afraid. And it was the first time I didn't have a fear. The next album I released, just my zeal increased even more. I released this project called... Uh, it Takes a Village, and that opened up a global door. Um, that's the album that was played in, in London. That's the the, uh, the album that had singles that was played on, on y'all video stations there and then some other places across the world. And that was the album that opened the door for me to get uh, the relationships to get to London um, was that album. Um, and, and yeah, it just, it just continually just increased. Um, I'm big on freedom of expression lyrically. And your, your music should reflect your life and your standpoint of life. And my life was God. It was about God. It was about being transparent. It's about bringing people to God in the most authentic way that I knew how, which is the only way I know is to be myself. Um, and it's been very well received, man. Um, so that's, that's kind of just my journey in a nutshell. Mm, yeah, thank you for that. So you talked about how at the very beginning you had apprehensions about a Christian rap and in fact I saw in one of the social media posts from a very prolific Christian hip hop uh, Instagram page about how uh, Christian hip hop has made a positive impact on your life. Tell me the journey from you being apprehensive about Christian hip hop, why you are yeah. apprehensive and now why why you are now fully embracing it and so tell me the journey of, you know, with all of that yeah. Yeah so, so when I first so when I finally started listening to Christian hip hop, the first person that I really, really liked, I heard this album by Lecrae uh, called Things All Work Together, All Things Work Together. And it changed my perception of this music because it was incredible. It was impactful. It was lyrical. The beats was amazing. And this guy came from a so, very transparent, so, real so, place. So was it So was it like that you were thinking that Christian rap is whack? Yeah, I thought it was corny. I, I didn't hear anybody to listen to. And Christian hip hop, where I was from locally, was very boxy. Um, it wasn't necessarily from guys that I knew that it wasn't very, it wasn't the lyrical guys like us. Um, the beat selections a lot of times was outdated. And, and I thought that was all. And to be honest with you, my, uh, my ignorance came because I didn't know any different. I only knew a very finite amount of artists. I only knew a, a, a very small sample size of people that I listened to. See, I had never heard at that point. I didn't heard of, I haven't heard of Bizzle. I didn't hear about Lecrae. I didn't hear about Swoop. I didn't hear about a lot of these incredible artists that I end up falling in. You know, like I think they're incredible. You know what I mean? And um, then from there, I started finding it's a whole world of independent artists within this genre that's incredible as well. And, and the more I heard these people, I, I found myself getting sometimes more message, more ministry from this than I was getting from other things. You know what I mean? And, and it was a blessing as well as the fact that I was doing it myself at this point. I felt a community was there. A, a community that reaches places that sometimes the church that's in the four walls cannot. And that part made me really, really fall in love with Christian hip hop and why it's such a big part of my life. You know, not just about some music, it's about my life and and allows me to be bold when I walk into other events that's not necessarily Christian hip hop, but we're going to make it Christian hip hop because I'm there and I'm a representation of God in any room. So I've been played on radio, on secular radio stations all over the country, but I never act as if I'm anybody else. When I'm featured, when I'm on that interview, when you hear my music, I'm going to let you know I'm a Christian hip hop artist. This is kingdom music. I give God glory. It's just, it also happens to be very dope. Thank you very much. But man, man, I know man. you was blessed <laughs> by it. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, man, I go, I'm gung-ho about it now for sure. 
But it was it was only because I had a lack of um I, I didn't know a lot of artists at the time and a lot of this was based off my perception as opposed to knowledge. When I was I had and I had that perception at the time. So yeah, that's that that would be what that was, man. Mm -hmm.